Welcome back to the Ratchet and Clank Marathon. Last time we said farewell to the PlayStation 2 with Secret Agent Clank. Now we are finally diving into the future saga with the PlayStation 3. Now, I should warn you that these games are heavily story and lore driven. If you don't want to get spoiled, then either click right off and play the game yourself or just skip to the part where I'm talking about the gameplay. So, without further ado, let's take a look at Ratchet and Clank Future Tools of Destruction. Tools of Destruction is a 3D platformer action adventure game released for the PlayStation 3 here in North America on October 23, 2007. It was the first ever PlayStation 3 installment of the series, as well as the first entry of the new Future Saga. And from what I can gather from We Dude 83's review of the game, it is meant to be like a soft reboot of the series, where everything from the previous game still happened. But we are in a new galaxy called Polaris, and we are not continuing any other major storylines. Speaking of storylines, time to abridge that plot. So we start off in a rather beautiful, though destroyed, Kerwong, and try and save Quark from invading forces, where they turn to Ratchet and try to kill him. Well damn, this already started on a rather high note, though dark. But we also meet our big bad of the game, Emperor Percival Tachyon, who wants to kill Ratchet because he is the last of his kind, that being the Lombax, who killed Tachyon's race known as the Kragmites in something known as the Great War. We escape enemy forces, and Clank starts to see these creatures known as the Zoni. Later we learn that Tachyon is after something called the Lombax Secret, which was a device that wiped out the Kragmites long ago and believed to be on the Apogee space station. We make our way there and meet three new characters, Kronk and Zephyr, two old as all fuck warbots, and one of my personal favorites, Talon Apogee, who is voiced by Tara Strong in this game and the next game. Talon then threatens to throw Ratchet out the airlock before realizing he is a Lombax. We then get an exposition dump about the space station, where we learned it was raided by space pirates. We then go and retrieve a stolen artifact, only for it to show coordinates to the planet known as Riken 5. Once there, we learned that the Lombax secret is something called the Dimensionator, which speaks of having something to do with interdimensional travel. We search for the Dimensionator, only to run into the plumber from the previous games, who claims that the Dimensionator doesn't even exist. Clank theorizes that the Kragmites were simply removed rather than killed, and the plumber gives us a hexagonal washer. This will become important later, I swear. Quark then tells us about the supercomputer known as Iris, which also equals bad news since it is smack dab in the middle of another baddie's territory who we met when retrieving the artifact, Captain Romulus Slag. We raid the base learn more about Tachyon, and learn that Talon got captured and sent to Zordum prison, which, here's another bit of trivia. We had to hear the names of familiar Ratchet and Clank characters, primarily Ace Hardlight from Deadlock, and, according to the fandom wiki, Slim Cognito, who is also one of the prisoners, though if I had to guess why he's locked up, it's from selling us those weapon modifiers from the previous games. That will guarantee you to get locked up in prison. We free Talon, and learn that the Dimensionator is on the planet Jacindu. We find the hat, though Slag and his crew caught up and threatened to kill Clank if Ratchet doesn't give them the Dimensionator. That didn't last long, and we behead Slag after his boss fight! Rusty Pete, Slag's first mate, promotes Ratchet as the captain, but he just wants the Dimensionator. Quark then takes it and is said to throw it into a black hole, but his pod was sent to the Kragmite's homeworld, pretty much gift wrapping it to Tachyon, who then brings back the Kragmites. After a separation moment of the game, we head to another destroyed city and save it and head back to the previous planet of Fastoon, where we break into the court of Azmuth and finally fight Tachyon for the final boss fight, who we then pretty much kill. He doesn't appear in any game, so I'm only guessing that we murder him. Ratchet and Clank then use the hexagonal washer to save their asses. Told you this would be important. Afterwards, the Zoni finally made themselves known to everyone and took Clank to an unknown location, finally ending Tools of Destruction. Fucking hell, that was long for trying to abridge a plot. 
Now, story-wise, I like the world building of the Polaris Galaxy. If you look at certain locations, we can assume that this place has been through a lot and has been around for a longer period of time than Solana. I also got this sense of lawlessness from this place since we have people like smugglers, pirates, etc. This is one of the things that made Deadlock stand out. Though, looking back, I sometimes feel like the plot kept losing focus until we entered the third act where we got the Dimensionator. The Kragmites were also a huge letdown since they only invaded one planet and it's on to the final boss planet. Though, I guess what I can say is that this game focuses on a more centralized cast instead of one-off characters on different planets. I think the only ones I ever liked were the Smuggler, who was voiced by Jess Harnell, and while people say that Talon is kind of bland in this game, I still liked her. Though that could be because she was voiced by Tara Strong before being replaced by Allie Hillis for... Into the Nexus. All I can say is this. Angela Cross, she ain't. SPEAKING OF HER! Now, this has always been something that bugged the entire Ratchet and Clank fanbase, and even myself for the longest time. For those who don't know, Angela Cross was a Lombax making her debut, and only debut, in Ratchet and Clank Going Commando. Let me repeat, she is a Lombax. Can you see my issue here? She had never been mentioned ONCE in the entire game. She is mentioned in the in the next game, A Crack in Time, and in the comic series, primarily in Ratchet and Clank issue number 5, Multiple Organisms. Whatever, the story, while having glaring issues, it's okay. Now, how about the gameplay? Gameplay is pretty much the norm here. Go to a planet and blow shit up to Kingdom Come and rinse and repeat. Of course the weapons level up like normal, but new to this game we have a skill tree to upgrade our weapons using Raritanium. Upgrades include the likes of more damage, more ammo, or more bolts or Raritanium. Surround a mysterious symbol and we have a special ability for that specific weapon. Another notable difference is how the Rhino 4 was handled. Originally we just need to spend around a million bolts but now it is split into 13 hollow plants scattered throughout the entire game, and I just suggest using a guide for help. We also have a new group of weapons called devices, which are just... kinda useless. The only notable ones were the Groovatron and Mr. Zircon. Overall, I say the gameplay is honestly one of the best. Sure, there are ship segments, but they are nowhere as bad as the ones from Going Commando. Now, as a whole, is Tool of Destruction still good? Yes. Yes it is. For the first ever Ratchet & Clank game for the HD generation, I say it held up pretty damn good. It is with that in mind, I am giving Tools of Destruction an 8 out of 10. From the world building of the new Polaris Galaxy to the new weapons and introduction of devices, Tools of Destruction set the groundworks of the future saga. Now I want to hear from you all. Did you play Tools of Destruction? And could you possibly recommend this to a friend? Leave your answers in the comments below. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and follow me on my social media. Links are down below as always. And join me next time where I take a look at one of the shortest Ratchet games ever in the form of Ratchet and Clank Future Quest for Booty. Until then, I be seeing ye on the seven seas, me hotties.